Hi, welcome to Talking Tech. I'm your host, Marcus Yan. And someone told me that we've got some secret laptops at Intel. So I had to find out about that. So I, I hit up someone at Intel, Nick Blair, who might know more about that and so happen he does. So Nick, thanks for joining me on Talking Tech to talk about our secret laptops. Awesome, I'm really happy to be here, Marcus. So uh, quickly, uh, who are you and what do you do at Intel? So I work at our enthusiast laptop team uh, and I'm the technical marketing manager. So one of our roles uh, in technical marketing is to get our hands on our early products and then spend time understanding their performance, uh, how they're going to work in various scenarios. Um, and that's where the secret laptops really come in. Okay, so, so, so secret laptops. First of all, some of these laptops look like laptops I can find, find on the store shelves. Um, but this is definitely not a laptop. Uh, so let's start off with, with this. Like, what is this and what does it have to do with laptops? Well, this is a reference vehicle, an RBP, that we use to start iterating through our early silicon. You know, you can't use a laptop like this and replace the CPU, replace the PCH, or a number of other devices. They're all soldered down into the board. Uh, when you take a look into this, it's gonna have more of that traditional desktop look and feel. You're gonna see that we have the CPU here, you know, hard drive memory, you know, all of those are going to be replaceable as well as upgradable. So we can replace firmwares rapidly as new silicon or updates come out. Uh, and this is what we use for a significant portion of our early validation of our products. And it's modular, it looks like it's, and it's got like a, a main board, motherboard, like laptops do, but it's, it, it, it looks like, as I saw, you can, you can replace the CPU, which is, which is pretty cool. Um, and it helps for you to make those generational changes, right? Like, well, like you're on a desktop, right? You can compare one to the next by, by taking the CPU out, putting the new one in. Well, unfortunately, they're not quite that modular. We have one of these for each of our generations. So with 11th gen, we had one, and then we have a new reference board with 12th gen. Okay, so that's the, uh, the RVP, you know, and uh, is, is, this, is this like a progression? Do we start with this to end up where we are now, or do you have one of these all the time for different types of testing? Well, absolutely. We use these through pretty much the life of the product until we get to the point of launch. But there's a, a point of diminishing return with a platform like this. You know, when you look at a laptop, you're, you're, you're talking about a thermally constrained device, you know, plugged into power, you know, or unplugged and running on battery. You're not going to be able to do that on a device like this. And when we come out with launch claims, our goal is to come out with claims that actually align with what the consumer would see on, on the shelf uh in retail what 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 problems are these to solve you know of course you, know, you do some like validation testing that sort of thing but what is what's the overall goal you're trying to achieve with either this or any of these other well coming out with the new architecture is absolutely not easy things change like take our 12th and 13th gen platforms we have our new hybrid architecture we needed to work with devices like this early to start understanding how will the user experiences work with that new hybrid architecture? You know, how can we leverage our P cores and our E cores to differentiate versus 11th gen that didn't have that architecture? And that pathfinding is done on platforms like this. Does that eventually bring us to like the other laptops? I know that that one clearly looks like it's several generations uh, older than some of these other ones. Can you walk me through? Yeah, so, so we've been partnering with MSI uh, for a number of generations. Uh, this platform right here is one of our seventh gen platforms. And so we work with them early to help us build their Halo, their highest performing platform uh, that's going to come to market. And like I said, here we have, you know, a seventh gen, you know, back then laptops were a little bit bigger than they are today. But again, this was the highest performing gaming laptop that you could find. And I think this really shows a testament again to how far Halo laptops have come in just the last five generations. Yeah, okay. That, you know, this today is our highest performing platform at launch from MSI. And, and you know, these look like, these are all MSI laptops looking very much like, I think I have a G66 uh, at home and, you know, it, it doesn't look too dissimilar from from that one. Um, what, what makes this different from the one someone can buy from the store? Well, during seventh gen, nothing was different. It was just that we were partnering early to get that platform. But when we launched our 35 watt part with Tiger Lake, we ran into a unique problem. You know, our launch schedule changed and it aligned with NVIDIA's next gen graphic launch. 
And what we found is we were challenged on making claims on our product. NVIDIA's product wasn't ready to go to market yet. It was under embargo. You know, our platform was paired with it at the time, and that really limited our ability to tell that Intel story. You know, what are we bringing to that next generation part? You know, and, and why should consumers look towards that next generation? So basically you're saying, because the new platform or Intel is also gonna launch with new NVIDIA graphics, you really wanna isolate what is the improvement that Intel's bringing to the table without having you know, that extra data or that extra performance actually being added by a new generation of GPU. You nailed it. Uh, I mean, when you look at laptops, not only have they lowered in Z height and gotten smaller, but you know, there's a number of differences that happen, whether it's third-party graphics, thermal solutions. You know, our goal when we launch is always to try to come up with the fairest comparison against our previous generation. Um, and, and like I said, in 13th gen, we really ran into that unique situation, uh, which we, we came back into the lab, we started asking ourselves, what can we do differently to make sure that we can tell that Intel story? So, so back with 11th gen, we ran into issues. So what we have here is our 12th gen platform. And this 12th gen platform was built with our RTX 3080. Now you might say, well, there's, there's RTX 3080s right. out in the market today. But what you're not going to find on the shelf today is one of our 12th gen paired with an RTX 3080. NVIDIA launched their next gen products. Our OEM partners like MSI, you know, paired the best of Intel with the best of NVIDIA. So when you go look on the shelf for 12th gen, they're all going to be RTX 3080 Ti's. And, but this one has a 3080. Exactly. For the point of comparison from one generation to the next. Absolutely. So that gave us the unique opportunity. We were able to leverage MSI's GE76, both 11th gen and 12th gen with RTX 3080s. So now we've got identical discrete graphics. We pair the same level of memory. Uh, now the memory may be different. Uh, you know, we have DDR5 now in our 12th gen and 13th gen platforms, but that's okay. That's one of our features that we're bringing to the new platform. And that's really what we want to highlight. So eliminate the things that are different that don't come from our platform and then really focus on what it is we bring. So now when we go out and we do game testing and we compare you know, one platform versus the other, we get that full understanding of what the CPU and platform brings to that next generation. It's basically about having clean data, right? So when, when Intel makes a claim of like, this percentage increase performance gen over gen, it is really, like you said, it is it is the new technology Intel brings and not, you know, have, having other other data in there that frankly, you know, Intel can't take credit for. No, absolutely. And and we put a lot of work, in, you know, into partnering with MSI uh, and partnering with NVIDIA, you know, because it does require their partnership as well, because they need to help enable MSI to build our next gen platforms with their current graphics. Because MSI and NVIDIA are focused on that next-gen product that they're launching, uh, but our partnerships that we've built with our ecosystem partners is what enables us to create these unique platforms that really focuses on that isolation of our platform uh, and enables us to create our story. Um, I've been, this one's closest to me right now, uh, but this is 13th gen, Raptor Lights is kind of the, the new exciting thing. Uh, what is special or secret about this one that you needed this one to be built by MSI and, and NVIDIA and some of the ecosystem to help us? Well, again, we just launched a similar platform from MSI with 12th gen, which is our, our 12th gen HX, um, and it comes with RTX 3080 Ti. And NVIDIA just recently launched their desktop 4000 series. And we'll most likely launch 4000 series with Raptor Lake and mobile. We wanted again to create that clean comparison. So here you'll find our, our HX part in the same chassis with the same thermal solution, with the same graphics that we get the luxury really to compare gen over gen. Okay, well, well, pretty cool. Um, is there, I mean, is there anything else that you've kind of surprising things that you've learned over the years by having this special setup with, you know, with our partners? Um, or is this mostly just, you know, something you do to, to nerd out on on, on, on data sets? Is there anything that has kind of oh. surprised you that you've learned over the years? 
I, I mean, well, one, we learn what the experience is going to be for the consumer. And, and I think that's one of those things that we need to internalize. When we work with platforms like this, we don't actually get the ability to use third party graphics in a lot of these platforms. So we don't get to understand until we get these types of platforms, what gaming performance is going to look like. We work off of projections based off of performance data that we're getting off of the reference vehicles. And so we have an idea, but again, like you said, lots of data sets, lots of digging into, you know, how, you know, these platforms are going to perform in that real world scenario. Uh, but I think there's other things that these platforms bring that uh, we get to do is it, sometimes with new platforms come new features, uh, DDR5 versus DDR4. So now we have two platforms that are similar. We can focus on the differences in memory performance. Uh, these platforms, for example, with Alder Lake, when we launched 12th gen, uh, we have the ability to have PCIe Gen 5, Gen 4, both CPU attached, as well as two PCH attached drives. So, you know, we created RAID sets and got different drives, connected them to the different ports inside of this platform so that we could start digging into not only just like FPS performance or the CPU performance, but also those other features like Gen 4 CPU attached with 11th and 12th Gen, and now Gen 5 with both 12th and 13th Gen. Uh, we've talked a lot about these like platform technologies. Um, what about in terms of the way, you know, OEMs and partners design their systems? Is there anything to do with, hey, the way the cooling is set up from one generation to the next? Is there anything that goes into looking at how thermals affect the data from one generation to the next? Oh, absolutely. Because let's take a look at these two platforms again. They are very different. Uh, and these are some of the situations that we have to deal with when, when we launch a new product. Uh, you know, this was a 7th gen platform, but MSI uh, had this all the way through 9th gen. Uh, when they moved to 12th gen, they launched their GE lineup as their Halo H platform. And as you can tell here, there's a significant difference between those two laptops. So yes, we spent a lot of time understanding the differences in thermals. And there were challenges when we went out with launch claims. You know, we weren't able to go out with the ideal scenario gen over gen because the market was shifting. You know, there are no more 54 millimeter laptops out there in the market today. Uh, and when you look at, you know, the latest 13th gen platform, you know, this is 26 millimeters. This is less than half the thickness of a laptop from ninth gen that we use for, for our performance claims. So yeah, we dug into thermals a lot. You know, how much of a hit were we going to take gen over gen? But we still, you know, needed to tell that realistic story of what platforms are going to look like when they land on the shelf. You know, sometimes things don't always work in our favor as much as we would like, but we really strive to create the best comparison. Accuracy, apples to apples comparisons, that sort of thing. Exactly, and if we can't get apples to apples, you know, unfortunately we try to make the, the newer generation the one where there's the mismatch like we have here in the thermal right. solution. Uh, because, Taking the conservative approach is what you're telling me. Exactly, because there's more copper in this, probably twice as much copper in the thermal solution than you'll find yeah. in this. And that absolutely does impact performance. But we've made a ton of improvements. And that's why OEMs like MSI can drive that performance into thinner and thinner laptops. They don't have to spend as much on the cooling solutions. They can provide you know, more flexibility in designs, thinner designs you know, to provide more options and better options to the consumer. Okay. Well, Nick, thanks for talking tech on uh, the secret laptops. Appreciate it. Right on, happy to be here.